All right, so um, got a little old 1971 Kawasaki MT1 mini bike. Um, no spark, uh, a little bit of troubleshooting. Brought me to the conclusion that the source coil was damaged. Um, it was internally short shorted. Something had pinched some wires on the coil, damaged the coil, and it didn't have the resistance it needed to have. Uh, for this particular bike, the resistance for this coil is supposed to be about 1.6 ohms. Um, and so going forward, that's what I'm going to use as my specification. Um, I went ahead and this is the source coil here. Um, I've already unwound it. Uh, it had roughly 300 turns. Um, I didn't count exactly. I basically unwrapped one layer um, and it was 51 turns. Um, and then there was about six layers of wire. So I just roughly 300 turns. Uh, but I know it's supposed to be 1.6 ohms. Um, what I'm using, you can buy a magnet wire. Um, I'm not exactly sure what gauge wire this was that was on it. Uh, this is part of what was pulled off it. Like I said, it was pinched and cut, and this is the short section that came off. Um, but I've got some. These are just solenoids out of a automatic transmission, automotive style transmission. Um, a buddy of mine gave these to me a while back. They just he rebuilds transmissions. These were left over. Um, I've checked resistance on. I've got three of them here, and they all use the same size wire, um, but it's right around the between 1.5 and 1.8 ohms between these three. So um, if I mess up one, I can start over and use the rest of it. But um, I figure that would give me the right resistance, uh, which and should give me about the same number of turns. Um, the wire gauge sizes are really close. I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up. So um, to wind this, I don't want to wind it all by hand. Um, so what I did, I just this is some half-inch PVC. I heated the end up with a torch and I just kind of smashed it over the end. The other side is the same shape. Um, and you can see it's got the hole in there, the mounting hole. Um, a 16 penny nail fits perfectly. This is totally redneck engineering right here. So smash it over um, and it fits in there pretty good. And then I just drilled a hole through and did a 16 penny nail, cut it off so it'd be pretty flush. Um, and it just comes out. So let's get that back in there. So what I'm going to do, I found that. And what I'm going to use it to turn is I've got this is just an old half-inch Craftsman drill, uh, but it's got a speed control, and you can lock the trigger and set it to a certain speed. Um, and down to the speeds that's going to be manageable as far as rap, you know, rewinding this coil, um, it's about the slowest speed this thing can handle and still have enough oomph to, to turn the the uh, chuck here. Um, I've also got this is just a one-inch hole saw that just out of one of the cheap kits from like Harbor Freight, um, and it doesn't quite fit over this half inch PVC, but it's real close. And if you basically drill over this and reduce the diameter of this with the hole saw, it fits really snug. Um, there's also the holes that go straight through this. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, probably just run a, a small screw in there just to keep it from turning. And then I'll lock the, uh, the drill on and it'll just turn for me, uh, whichever direction. It's nice because I can change directions with the drill. So I can get everything winding the same direction as it originally was. Um, let me go ahead and do this now and just kind of show you. Just kind of got to force it in there. There we go. So just kind of, you can see these shavings that came off. So, and it's not the most true thing. I mean, this is total redneck engineering, like I said. Um, but it's going to work for, for the one All right, so there. here's my setup. Um, I just put, took a scrap piece of plywood, half-inch plywood. Um, piece of threaded rod, some scrap 2x4. Uh, this just holds my spool of wire here. Um, you can see I've got the drill. i just got a block screw to it on each side just to keep it from rotating. It's a pretty snug fit in there. Um, and the top side of this drill isn't flat, so it kept wanting to tip forward. So I've got a clamp on the back back here, um, just holding on to the underside of the plywood. Um, I've been, I'm on my third wrap. Um, and so far it's going pretty good. I didn't, I've been going slow and controlling the trigger manually. Um, the amount of tension that I have to put on this wire to keep it tight, um, the slow speed locking in on the drill, it just wasn't cutting it. Um, so I've, I've just been controlling it manually, but it's really no big deal. Um, I've got just a small piece of leather that I've been using between my fingertips to grab like this. And then I applied downward tension and I'll just wrap a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to get you in close on this just so you can kind of watch me wrap and I'll probably do some fast forward thing. But um, my big concern is the wire that I've got coming out. Um, this was the smallest gauge stranded wire that I had. Um, and the hump that it made underneath 
um, is a little bigger than than what I remember being there. Um, I I don't think I'll have a problem getting all of, well. I hope I don't have a problem getting all of this on there. Um, I counted my second layer and I was 54 turns on that layer, so I'm actually may end up with a few more turns than was on there originally, uh, which would be awesome. Give just a little bit more output, but um, I'm going to reposition the camera and get you in here closer so you can see what's going on. Okay, so here it is. Um, I used every bit that was on that spool, um, and I haven't measured resistance yet, but um, I also, I forgot to, um, this section right here where the wire comes through, this one connects to the condenser. Um, it originally had uh, some, it looked like maybe cloth tape that was wrapped under the windings and came over and then captured it all under the windings. Um, I didn't think that far in advance. Um, I did lay out, this is just some, uh, it's like packing tape that has the strings in it. Um, I laid out a strip of that wound over the top of it so it'd, it'd hold on there good. Uh, but then after I captured this wire in it, I didn't have any way to hold it. So I just did a couple wraps of the packing tape. Um, it didn't add, really add any thickness to this coil. So um, I think it turned out good. So I'm gonna do, here I've got ohm meter. Um, got it set on just 200 ohms setting. Meter normalized about 0.3 ohms. So I'll just check here. So that's 1.7 ohms. It with nothing in the line, it's 0.3 ohms. So I'm at 1.4 ohms, um, 1.2, something like that. So that should be pretty good. I, I did six six wraps of wire, same gauge wire. Um, the service manual calls for 1.6 ohms, um, but that's after the condenser. So the condenser may add a little bit of resistance. I don't know. Um, you've also got about a foot of a foot additional wire, um, stranded wire that goes up to where it hooks to the coil. So that's where they originally tell you to test from. So I'm happy with it. Um, I'm going to get it soldered back in um, to the condenser, back on the stator plate, and see if this thing's got fire. Okay, so flywheel's back on. Um, I just got spark plug grounded to the head here. Let's see if, if we can see some spark. Hoorah! 